All right. So here we are online. All right. So do you think it's time to start? I don't know. I was supposed to wait until the uh, camera does its thing, but I think so. I think um, Ed is joining us on 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 the chat. Is that right? Absolutely. So he'll be able to respond to questions. He'll also be posting uh, some in good um, internet addresses and links. Uh, that you might want to take advantage of. But more about that as we get started on this discussion of our privacy and security on our social media accounts and through email, our phone, texting, etc. There we go. And this is Chris. I'm Jill. And we are from Boomer Tech Adventures. All right. Glad you're here today. Cool. So this this safety conversation um, is something that that comes up a lot. Oh, it does. Yeah, I, I get questions in my adult ed classes all the time, and things change. So, for example, Chris, I'm driving over, and I'm listening to uh, I guess NPR, and evidently in the state of Illinois, which has the strictest law in the country about using biometrics, that means facial recognition, fingerprints, etc. In Illinois, before anybody can collect those, they have to get written permission from you or from me or whatever, and they have to be willing to um, tell the people how long they're going to keep that data. And uh, Facebook doesn't do that. And there are Facebook users in Illinois who are uh, suing Facebook for this illegal gathering of facial recognition. And uh, Facebook evidently has settled. They're not claiming that they've done anything wrong or they've broken the law. They just want this lawsuit to go away. And uh, the commentary on the article, on the uh, news was, uh, this is going to affect um, what other states do whether other companies uh, will continue to try to develop software that um, can gather this information and then uh, use it. And that, you know, on Facebook, it's fun to see tags, like I see you tagged when you're doing some cooking thing somewhere. And that's always fun when it pops up on my news, uh, news feed. However, it is an option that uh, could be misused. And there's all this whole question of privacy. Um, you know, do I have the right to see what you're doing cooking in Kennebunk or somewhere else? Um, you know, have you given express permission? So it's a big issue and will continue to get more complicated. Yeah. And, you know, I think that, um, you know, as with many things, it's, it's a question of balance, mm -hmm. I think. I think that uh, what can sometimes happen and you know this is nothing new is that um one can get overly concerned about safety and um end up uh putting yourself in a position where it's more difficult to benefit mm -hmm. or to enjoy yeah um what you know what new developments can bring so I, I, I think that, um, you know, a, a good example is um, recently the state got, what was it like $10 million grant to increase broadband access? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I remember uh, there, there was a time when to uh, get anything done. I, I had a, a teacher when I was a principal in Freeport. Uh, in order to get work done online, she would drive from her house <laughs> to the parking lot of the school, school. <laughs> Sit there and do in her order work. to oh, get yeah. some work done online. Um, and more and more now, you know, whether you are comfortable with it or not, um, many of the things that are now necessary are available primarily online, whether it be health care, mm -hmm. whether um, it be paying bills, 
Um, you know, something that I saw that, you know, someday I may use is that, you know, the ability to order groceries online from a local grocery store. Absolutely. And have it delivered. I'm saying that, okay, so I'm 101 in a snowy storm and I don't have any food in the house. I'll go online and order something from Hannaford's and have them deliver it, yeah. So what I wonder is, isn't the bottom line, we all have a responsibility to educate ourselves about things like privacy and security, and then it comes down to a personal decision on just how much privacy you want. I've had people in my adult ed class who come in and they'll listen about Facebook and they'll say, nope, don't want anything to do with it. Um, and that's their decision. And other people, uh, especially some of our younger colleagues, who live their life online. And so it comes down to a personal decision. But we have to educate ourselves. And, and we have to keep that education up to date. I think that's that's always kind of the key is like so um, the more you know I think the better you are able to reach that balance mm -hmm. between being afraid and being cautious and you know being um, uh, not incautious but reckless, reckless you, know, you don't want to be right. reckless online right. so you want to be careful so Let's let's talk about that. And since we're on Facebook, and <laughs> you folks are on Facebook, if you're watching us, um, and that's where our business kind of lives, yes, to to, to some degree. Um, so, what are some ways that people can keep themselves safe? Well, first thing is, I hope everybody knows how to find settings uh, in Facebook on Facebook. Uh, if you don't. It's a time, if you look in the blue menu line, there's a little black downward facing arrow. It's hard to find, you know, you might need your magnifying glass. Um, but if you click on that, you get a drop down menu and one of those things is settings. So if you tap on settings, you will get a new screen. And over on the left hand side, you will see um, a whole list of choices. And so I think there are three things we ought to talk about today. The, the um, privacy, ads, and uh, Facebook activity. Those are three choices you have. So if I tap on privacy, what are some of the things, yeah, I'm sure you've done that. What are some of the things you look for in that section? Well, you know, one of them is, you know, whether your posts are public. Mm -hmm or whether they're just for friends. And you also have the capacity to actually decide which friends yes. will actually see what you post. So you gotta read the fine print. Yes. And so the difference between public and just for friends, what happens if I do public? What does that mean? What's, what are the long-term ramifications for that? Well, if you're a business, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that is probably the least restricted. Mm -hmm. And you want, you know, so Boomer Tech Adventures, uh, we would click on public mm -hmm. for that so that everyone that the algorithm um, identifies that might be interested in what we provide, they would be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, if it's on your friend page and it's public, you need to know that, okay, so I post something, Chris is a friend. I may have it set that um, my friends can see it, but if I've made the individual post public, Chris sees it, you can then share it, right? Mm -hmm. And that will share to your friends who may be different than my friends, and then those friends can share with their friends. And so before you know it, um, you don't know who's seen your post. In fact, I just had something recently. Um, I got this um, post about a skiing trip, and there was a person I know that was um, was acquaintance. It's not a good friend. Was tagged in it because his name was tagged. It showed up on my newsfeed, and so then I knew where he was. Not that that's any big deal, uh, but for somebody it might be. And so it's just you just got to keep in mind that it's it's 
it can expand faster than um, you think. Yeah, so that's the network part of yeah. social networking. Yes, and with some people, again, that's that personal decision. That's terrific. Other people, eh, not so much. So you got to think about it. So the second thing um, that I recently read about was if you go down the list towards the bottom, you'll see ads. Have you, have you looked at that? Okay, so this is what we know that. I've them off of that. Yes. <laughs> uh, we know that social media makes their money. I mean, they are for profit. They're non. They're not nonprofits. In fact, again, in the same article, I can't remember how many millions and millions of dollars that uh, Facebook made this year, but it was huge. Um, yeah, you know, they sell ads, and which ads show up on your news feed depends. Um, what you're clicking on, what you're spending time looking at, and what information they're getting from the outside. So if you look at ads, you've got some choices there uh, that you can control, uh, not specifically what ads, but you can control what information Facebook is using in order to decide which ads will show up on your newsfeed. So that's worth taking a look at, reading about it, and thinking about it. And then um, the third, which just came out, I think, the beginning of the week. I think uh, our friend Mark, founder and CEO of Facebook, not really our friend, but uh, he has announced that Facebook, in, um, in a desire to be more transparent, is making available to users something call, called Off Facebook um, activity tool and so if again on that left hand column it's in blue if you go down you'll see my Facebook activity you tap on that and you'll get several uh, you get a screen and uh, over on the right you have the option to manage um, this portion of uh, your Facebook activity and what this is this is about Companies that sell names of customers who have visited their websites. And then Facebook can gather that information. Remember, we all have a digital portfolio about our likes and um, dislikes, etc. And um, so you can go on and you now can see which uh websites are sharing this information and i'm sure it's selling that information to facebook so i went on and i had 155 websites and i looked down they're innocuous most of them words with friends etc uh, but the article i was reading uh, it got some of those websites were pretty personal that uh, people found so it's worth going you have the option once you're there you can clear your history you can also um, turn this feature off, turn off this uh, ability for um, companies to send information to, or Facebook to use that information. So that's kind of interesting. It's brand new. I'm not an expert on it. i got to read some more. I think I'll do a blog post on it once I really have got all the, the ins and outs. But it's just kind of interesting knowing that, you know, Facebook, it doesn't matter, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, which of course is owned by Facebook, uh, they're all profit-making companies and their profit comes from gathering data. Yep. Information. Information. Do you want to share about tar uh, how that information might be used uh, as far as ads, how um, what ads show up on our news um, feed, or how companies can access that information to uh, share. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, um, generally speaking, I mean, what we know is that, um, you know, certainly when you're on Facebook, Facebook is collecting information about mm -hmm. where you go, what you like, what you think is funny, <laughs> what you're sad or mad yeah. about, those kinds of things. So, so I imagine that any time that you are 
navigating on Facebook. Uh, Facebook is keeping track of those things. Mm -hmm. They're keeping track of who your friends are. Yeah. Certainly. And so there's your networks there. But we also know that there are Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. And that when people click on those Facebook ads, um, so like, so I'm, 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 I enjoy hiking and camping. Yeah. And, you know, so there are different companies, including Amazon, but also some local companies. Sure. That advertise on Facebook. And, um, you know, once I click on that, Facebook has that information about me, mm -hmm. but they're also, they also have the information on the company and what other people um, on Facebook are, are doing relative to that company. And I'm sure that that company would like to know mm -hmm. that information. So again, it's, it's that networking. It is. And the fact that I will never, I'm sure, see an ad for uh, fly fishing, simply because I've never clicked on anything related, et cetera. Uh, however, I see a lot of ads related to cooking and travel and clothing when I buy stuff online. So just know that, again, companies have the ability uh, to find demographic information. They don't have Jill Spencer, da-da-da-da, but they have, I'm sure I'm in there in a database of, you know, over 40, over 50, over 60. We won't go any further than that. No, it's true. Um, you know, who uh, likes cooking. And so people that the company might want or thinks might be interested in that particular demographic, those are the people who will see that ad. Whereas uh, you being male and not over 40 um, won't see that ad. I'm over 40. <laughs> Um, and, you know, it's just, it's probably, it's, it's the advertising business. It, it's not anything different than what was in mail, uh, what we used to get through the mail or in the magazines, you know, certain types of demographics, uh, bought Life magazine or bought Cosmopolitan or bought Esquire. And so, you know, an Esquire magazine, they're not going to be, uh, targeting women. If they're looking to entice um, men of a certain demographic. So it's just bigger, much bigger. It's worldwide. It's faster with um, the digital age. Yeah. So, we, so we've kind of talked about certainly kind of what happens in the background of, you know, how, how Facebook, um, quote, unquote, meets our needs. Certainly they're meeting their needs, but they're trying to do that by catering to what they're learning about us. Um, let's switch over to things that are perhaps a little more nefarious. So through uh, email and texting and well, what comes well, well, we, can, we, can, we can do that. But I was thinking about on Facebook. Oh, on Facebook. So many people are on Facebook that, you know, certainly there are legitimate companies that are on Facebook, mm -hmm. but there are individuals and groups that are on Facebook that are, not necessarily um, looking out for our best interests. Or perhaps not even human. Perhaps, maybe bots. Actually, um, you've just reminded me that as I was uh, sharing uh, some cooking uh, recently, mm -hmm. um, I was sharing individually to a, a small group of several dozen friends. And um, as I was doing that individually, when I got up to around 20 or so friends that I was sharing things with, I, I got a message from Facebook, like right in my really? Facebook page. Yeah. Wow. And um, it, it said something to the effect of, it appears that you are sending a lot of messages. Um, perhaps you'll want to slow down. And then um, it actually asked me, there was a place to check that said, you know, and some of you have seen this is I am not a bot yes. or I'm not a robot. And I had to check that off. And I also kind of stopped doing that for a period of time just to let the 
Facebook. I don't know. It's probably a Facebook robot that yeah, this is was, checking. was asking me that that was that was that was checking that out. Um, but it was interesting that it appears that Facebook is trying to minimize or at least to mitigate um, the use of robots yes. uh, to spam spam people. Yeah, which is a good thing. They still have some other work to do. Well, we won't get into that today. That's right. Okay, so I'm checking my watch, and you know, you should never put a microphone in front of you and I because we go on and on and on and on. <laughs> I think it maybe it's the old teachers in us, uh, but we did want to talk about email and texting yep. and um, phones and things that we need uh, that we have the option uh, to control. Yep. So one of the things that I find interesting—I don't know if you do it or not. But on your iPhone, with the latest um, update, you have the option to silence unknown callers. What that means is if people are not in your contacts, if you have this button on, it won't ring through. I don't know about you, but I gave up my landline this year. The reason I gave it up is because I tested it for two weeks. For two weeks, the only thing that came through were merchandising and selling me stuff on your landline on my landline and I said you know ring 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 and I'm programmed to answer but I didn't I got better at using caller ID uh, but this doesn't happen so much on iPhones but you can silence folks who uh, are not in your contacts now it doesn't cut them off they go right to voicemail so they can leave you a message but you won't get that incessant ringing and you find that in settings and then you scroll down to phone and you tap on that and you'll see the option silence unknown callers. Yep. And um, on mine, I went a step further. Is you can customize your outgoing message. And uh, you can make it your voice. Mm -hmm. But you can also type in what you would like the phone message to say. Mm -hmm. And... Mine says, thank you for calling. Um, if you are not a robocaller, you can leave a message. <laughs> Otherwise, just hang up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, those robocalls, and only get worse with the election season. So, so there we go. All right. So, so, so you, you can do that. Um, I was also, I, I wanted to bring up, so on, on Facebook, um, you, there are some clues. Oh yes. As to when um, when someone is is trying to take advantage of you in a negative way. And do you think these clues also apply to texting and email? I Absolutely. suspect what you're going to say does. Yes. Absolutely. Well, and yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, anytime uh, that I get a, a general message, um, just kind of out of the blue, mm -hmm. you know, that says, hi, how are you? <laughs> I know then, you know, that, you know, it's pretty clear that this person is going to either try to sell me something or get me to, you know, share some kind of information. And if I'm not in a playful mood, I'll just delete them. Yeah. But if I am in a playful mood, I'll, I'll play along and, but anyway, yeah, that's for not. that that that's for another time. That's 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 something else. But if you get a general message like that, certainly on Facebook or on Twitter or something like that, I, you know, you would just delete it. And the one of the biggest clues uh, that I found is if you get a friend request from someone that's already your friend. Yes. That's a real clue as to uh, that that you just need to block or, or delete that. Yes, absolutely. And, and, you know, maybe let your friend know that, hey, you know, you might want to check your account because someone is using your account to um, to spam people, yeah. take advantage of them. But um, on the email, um, there are a number of clues mm -hmm. that uh, we can we can use as soon as we see um the subject as soon as we see the greeting and then there's stuff in the greeting um, or in the body of the email that kind of gives you a clue what, what what might be one that you use oh well <laughs> um i had a I'm, I'm embarrassed to admit this this is years ago when i had a yeah well i still have my yahoo mail account 
Uh, I got a phishing, P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. And I received an email that looked so much like a email from, uh, physically looked like an email from Yahoo. I mean, all the logos, everything looked the same. I think I even did a search on the URL and that uh, didn't put any red flags. But what it said was something about security. And, I, you know, if I put in my password and uh, please, you know, sign in to do, to do this. And I'm <coughs> sitting there saying I shouldn't do this. But so I, you clicked on a link that was provided by the email. Hmm. Okay. And uh, I'm sitting there, I shouldn't do this. And then I typed in my username and password, which was the stupidest thing I'd ever done. Even though in my head I knew I shouldn't do it, but I'm so programmed as the good little girl to do what I'm asked to do most of the time. Not anymore after this. Anyway, within five minutes, I swear it was five minutes, I got an email from a friend saying, Jill, are you really in London and sick? I said, oh, my goodness. So needless to say, I changed my password, and actually I got a new email account. I only use Yahoo for advertisements. Uh, so certainly looking at um, when you're asked to um, – click on something you shouldn't do it the other thing like i got something because i have social security these days um saying that there was a problem with social security no i'm sorry that one came in over the phone got a call saying social security you need to do the da 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 i said eh, this doesn't sound right so i went online and i typed social security message plus scam up came a whole list of things that yes, indeed, this was a scam. So that's one of the strategies I take now. If I'm thinking something's questionable, I'll type in the topic plus scam. Lo and behold, I'll find it. Another one I had was, this one was through email, that I had a court case and I needed to get in touch with us and such. I'm saying, court case? No, I don't think so. So I went <laughs> online and typed, court case plus scam was a national scam. Um, again, trying to get personal information. So we just have to be vigilant, 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 vigilant about uh, responding to emails, texts, and um, phone calls from folks we don't know. Yeah. Absolutely. And be suspicious, even though that's not new nature. Um, but we have to be suspicious about that. There's one going around now, evidently. I haven't gotten it. Have you? Uh, about FedEx. It's a text saying... Um, your package is on the way click here to get this information and it's a scam yeah so if you're not expecting anything from fedex um they don't text anyway yep. so here's a scenario you get an email that's from me mm -hmm. and there's an attachment on it and i haven't talked to you about any attachments or sending you anything and it says this is cool <laughs> so what might you do I would uh, probably email you and say, and not a reply there. I would type a new email saying, Chris, did you send me this cool attachment? And you'd probably say, not that one, but I have other cool ones. <laughs> Speaking of which, now here we've gone on and on about what you should be afraid of. Or, or I shouldn't say afraid. That's a bad word. Forget that. Delete, delete, delete. That you should be thoughtful about. And if you look down in uh, below, in the comments, I'm sure Ed has given you a URL uh, for a checklist. We have three things you ought to remember, you need to remember about um, privacy and security in social media and um, email. Uh, it's okay to click on that url that's a legitimate one right and what makes it legit you know kind of wondering so why is that legitimate well if you are actually going to a site that you have chosen to go to as opposed to you know an email that gives you an, an anonymous link or something or a link that looks close um that's different it's you choosing it's kind of like when you call someone you know the number that you're calling. So it's very similar to that if you go to a site, that's different than clicking on a site that someone else gave Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So that's, that's, that's one of the big differences. Um, a really good example of that is, um, and I've 
I haven't fallen for it yet. Maybe it'll get smarter or, or trickier, but um, you're you're kind of browsing along and you get a pop up. Oh yes. Um, that your computer is infected and you need to do something right away. Yes. So click here and we'll help you or we'll fix that or something like that. Yeah. And, and it's uh, easy to panic and say, oh, no, because we all know what viruses can do right. to files, like et cetera. Really fast. Yeah. But, um, and what will sometimes happen, and um, I haven't done it, so I haven't experienced it, but someone told me what happened was they clicked on that and they get hooked up with with an online support person. Yes. And what that person does is they'll, they say, um, in order to fix this, we'll need to share your screen. Mm. And so if, if you've been familiar with screen sharing, that's something that's, that happens. Yeah. And um, as soon as they, as soon as you give them access to your screen, they actually then have access to your computer. Yes, and they can just suck all that information, all your contacts, all your files, all of the all stuff, your all your passwords. I mean, it's it's not a pretty scenario. So don't tap on any of those pop-ups. Um, and be aware that both micro – I've gotten uh, supposedly – uh, messages from Apple and and Microsoft that either my license was about to give up or I had a problem. Don't believe it. Um, that's not uh, legitimate. Uh, and if you have a question, get on the phone. It's an 800 number and check with Apple or check with Microsoft uh, before you tap. Okay. So we have gone on. Um, I'm thinking Ed has put some other URLs, which are safe to uh, tap on. One is to our YouTube channel, where we have a lot of um, videos related to Apple uh, digital devices, our iPhone, uh, iPads, computer. Uh, I imagine he's also put up, because we can't see it, uh, he's put up the URL for our website, which is worth visiting. Our blog is there. As uh, again, there are a lot of um, things that you can get that you might find useful information you might find useful for your uh, devices. Uh, we're about out of time as I look at my watch. Um, so I'm thinking that our next uh, Facebook Live ought to come from some suggestions from people who are following from you. us. So if there's something you would like us to research and then have a Facebook Live discussion on, please put that down below in the comments, and um, that's what we'll do Great. for our next one. So I'm not sure when it'll be, but we will announce it on Facebook. All right. And we have some websites of our own, certainly this one. Uh, we have a, another Facebook page, which is specifically for iPad, iPhone users. That's a closed group, and you're welcome. All you always have to do is ask to join. Yep. So that, there's an example of one where we've set it to private. Right. And as, as opposed to public. Um, I think you have to answer a couple of questions. I think so. Like that. so there's, there's, but you don't have to send money. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And um, we have our website, boomertechadventures.com. Yep. And we have a YouTube channel. Yes. Which uh, has dozens now. I think so, of, yes. Uh, of nice, simple, short tutorials on, on topics. Mostly how-tos. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So that's it for now. Uh, remember, we'd like to hear what you would like us to address um, in upcoming uh, Facebook Live sessions. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. All righty. Bye. Be thoughtful about what you tap on. Yeah, don't be afraid. Be thoughtful. Don't, yeah, be thoughtful. Don't be afraid. No. <laughs> <laughs>